Welcome to this video. In this video, I would like to show and explain to you how you can transport huge data sets. So how you can include large data sets into a customizing transport out of a maintenance view. So basically I had the requirement um, to set up multiple archive link document types um, and set these up properly. This requirement you can normally fulfill quite easily with the transaction OAD5 because um, after entering the transaction OAD5 you will end up in the archive link document type customizing wizard and there you can define the archive link document type normally being done in the transaction OAC2. You can set up the linkage between the object type, the archive link document type and the content repository normally being done in the OAC3 transaction. And you can also set up the archive link document type as a workflow document type being done in the SOA0 transaction. And last but not least, you can define the pre-setting in the transaction OAWS. So this transaction is perfectly fine, but I had to do this 139 times. And there I found a smart way that I would like to share with you. And you can use this basically as a sample if you would like to have large data sets to enter into a maintenance view and you would like to transport them as well. So first of all, let's get started in the OAC2 transaction. So basically this is the transaction to maintain archive link document types. And to do this, um, basically you can do this by two approaches. Now within this transaction, I would like to show and explain you the first approach. And to do this, therefore we open up a Excel file because we have to define a template based on this maintenance view. And as we can see, this maintenance view consists of four columns and we have to rebuild and use this format as well. So the first one is the document type. The next one is a description. Then we have the document class and we have the status. And for the status, I would like to show you a little trick as well. So for the first one, I would just like to um, show you this for a couple of examples. So um, yeah, let's copy these. So now I would like to show you this for yeah let's let's do it for um, maybe a couple more or this is this is fine so here let's do this for these then as description I just enter test how to complete document class will be always PDF and as mentioned I leave this status empty so as you can see you can also have um, have 200 rows as you want to. Then we have to copy our data sets, so the whole data with all the columns, and then we're using Control C to copy the data. And then we go into the target transaction and click on new entries. Then it's important in the first column in the top left, so in the first row, first column, there we use Control V to paste in this data. Then we hit the enter key. And now we can see that one row hasn't been copied. So um, right now we're having how many data do we have? Uh, 35. So there it's being cut off. So for after 35 for the rest data, we have to do the approach once again. Select all the data in the Excel file going into the next line down below and try to scroll to the bottom. So here, um, let's see, um, here we have it. So here, and then use control V once again, hit the enter key, and then you can follow this up. For the checkbox, you can um, select the first one and then with the arrow key and the space key on your keyboard, you can quite easily um, yeah, auto complete or basically select the checkboxes. And for those missed, you can do manually. And then basically to include data set after entering all of these entries, you hit the save button or you can use the key combination control S. And then within here, basically you can specify the customizing request, the transport that you want to or use the pre-selected one and click on continue. 
and then your entries are marked into this uh, customizing transport. And as mentioned, this is the first approach. Um, now I would like to show you the second approach for the next step after defining the archive link document types. You have to define the um, linkage in the OAC3 transaction. And here we also have a maintenance view. And the second approach is uh, kind of like more useful if you, for example, have a maintenance view with um, two dialog screens. So with a detail page where you can't use this table structure, where you just can enter all of the fields for one single entry and then entering the next one. So therefore this approach unfortunately won't work. But then you can do the second approach that I would like to show you right now based on this example. And to do this example, you have to get to know the maintenance view um, here. So the first one is that you can do is just hitting the focus into any input field and hit the F1 key. And then within here, you have to click on this technical information button. And here under table name here, this maintenance view is um, uh, printed you can see this is displayed and then with control c you can copy this or the second one is that you go into the se93 transaction and enter the transaction for the maintenance view so oac3 click on display and here next to view name also the maintenance view name is shown so after that, we go into the data browser, into the transaction SE16N. And um, the next one, not just entering into the data browser, we go into the uh, ABAP dictionary, into the transaction SE11, because here you select the view option and then in here you're using control V to paste in the copied maintenance view and then you click on display. And here you can already see the table behind this maintenance view or you switch to table join conditions and then here you also see the table behind this maintenance view. So we copy this and now we go finally into the data browser into the transaction SE16N and here we paste in this table, hit the enter key and now what is important, um, you can also execute this once if you have um, already any data. Now it's important uh, that we once again create a template for this structure right now. So therefore we open up an Excel file going into a next sheet. And here right now, once again, the first one is the object type. Then we having document type, then we having status, content repository, then category, linkage table, then document class, retention period, and reserve. So the first one, just for an example, we're doing this for the BKPF. So if I documents, then within here, Basically, we enter our um, archive link document types. So there we end these in here. Then the status, we're always setting X, content repository U2 in this case, category we're leaving empty, linkage TOA01 in this case, PDF uh, as document class, retention period, we're leaving this empty and also reserve. So let's continue this. So how to complete all of these, having all of the data in here and just quickly control. Yeah, this is fine. So then we um, basically have to copy all of the data once again using control C, then going one step back. And guys, very important disclaimer before showing you this. Next, what we're going to do is we directly input this copied data into the table itself within the data browser. Therefore, right now we're making the data browser edit table. And please only do this if the first approach doesn't work for you. 
only do this if you if the first approach is not feasible for you and you really know what you do in the second approach because you can screw up the whole table and it can produce larger errors so please just do this if you are aware uh, of the risks and are aware what could happen so only do if you're 100 sure what you're doing but basically to make the um, data browser editable and to enter the copied data we um, 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 go into the ABAP debugger by switching on debugging uh, by entering the command slash h in the command field then you can see debugging is switched on the next one is that we execute the data browser and then basically the ABAP debugger will start here in the variables we enter gd minus sub edit and next to it gd minus edit and we change these two variables to x hit the enter key and the next what we're going to do is we continue so we hit the f8 key or this button and then we can see that the data browser is now editable then next we uh, click on append row and next is uh, we go uh, in here right next to this drop down to insert in new row if you are not sure if you have still copied the data into excel do this before inserting um, yeah to make sure that you have copied the data then uh, you click on insert in new row and then what is important you scroll down because you can see based on the color that these are new entries so this is perfectly fine so this new row we will uh, delete and the other ones we can take over by hitting the enter key and then this is fine we click on save then you can see that these 36 entries in this example have been inserted or if you have larger data than this as well so this is fine now we check if the data is uh, really there by going into the oac3 transaction and then i would like to do a selection for the document type so here for example searching for this prefix um and here we have basically the data and the next one so here we have it so this is perfectly fine um so here we we have the data the next how we include this data is basically we have to um select these entries so therefore i try to make a smarter so first of all we have to um, go into the edit mode the next what we have to do is we have to select our customizing transport so on the table view and transport now we have to select our customizing request so then continue and now let's try to make a smarter search so let's see if this for example works okay this doesn't work mm, then let's see if this works no also not okay then mm, let's see last try okay this also doesn't work okay then maybe you have uh, kind of find a smarter selection because what we need basically is to find uh, our uh, data and therefore uh, i'm doing this manually right now so you have to select all of your data right now so so and at the top we had a couple of them so let's do this i think doing this how many 36 times is totally fine for this case then after selecting all of your data yeah please keep in mind a selection by content you find any way to um yeah just find your data and then you can just click on select all um, to have it selected smartly then next what you have to do is you have to click on include in request 
then uh, you can see that those were flagged and then click on the save button and then these entries are now included also in the customizing transport so yeah basically that's it now you can within the transport organizer se01 release the transport transport it in the target system and that's basically it so yeah i've shown you two really useful approaches to include large data sets into a transport into a customizing transport out of a maintenance view if you have any questions left put them in the comment section please like this video and please subscribe this youtube channel to not miss great upcoming videos thank you so much and see you in the next video